Hi Darkroom Core users, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this video we are going to learn about the X Drive, what it does, why it's there, what you can do with it. So the X Drive is a, a virtual drive. It's essentially just a shortcut and um, as an example I'm going to create a uh, new folder on my desktop. and We'll just leave it named new folder. And then what we're going to do is right click on that and then create a shortcut. So this shortcut just opens this folder. If we copy a file into that folder and open the shortcut, we can see that we are actually indeed looking at this same folder. So that's what the uh, the X drive does. It's a shortcut to a folder, but very specifically, it uses a drive letter, and that drive letter is always X. And the reason for that is you have the option of copying that folder to a different location, but Darkroom would then lose path of where those files are. So whenever you tell it where it's relocated, everything in Darkroom is just based off of X. So nothing's lost, nothing's broken. So we'll go ahead and open up Darkroom Core and go to our Setup tab and the Network Options. And this is the folder that Darkroom Core or Darkroom Pro in this case is looking at. So that X drive is just a shortcut to this folder. So let's say that you were running out of space on your C drive where this folder is located and you go out and buy a external hard drive you can copy that whole photos folder let me see if I can do that real quick so I plugged in a new drive and I'm gonna copy this path Oops. The reason why I'm using the path rather than the X drive is because it's going to give me the actual photos folder. Go back one step. And then I am going to let's move those out of the way. Find that new drive that I just plugged in. Which I am guessing is my D drive. And this was actually just a, a clone of a hard drive from another laptop but it will still work the same. We're gonna copy the photos folder from my C drive to my D drive. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just replace those files because this is just for demonstration. So now that that folder has been copied, I can now click Browse, go to my D drive and select the Photos folder. So now if I click on my photo library, it's now looking at a copy of my catalogs and images in a new location. So 
Before you go and change this, there are some really important things that you need to remember. First, if you do change it, remember that you changed it. Um, remember to bring your external hard drive. If you don't bring your hard drive, then nothing's available. The next thing is the drive letter may change. So instead of being your D drive, if I had a flash drive plugged in, taking that D drive position, then whenever I plug in this external hard drive, it would then become my E drive or my F drive. So that's really important to remember. If you call and say, I watched the video and now all my photos are missing, I will tell you, rewatch the video, specifically this part right now, remember it because about half the people that make this change will run into this issue. You wanna make sure that the drive, the location of this photos folder is available when you're trying to use the software. Otherwise, your photos will not be available. It's very important to remember before you make this step, if you're not comfortable, maybe skip this option. So the next thing, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm gonna put my folder back to the default location just so I don't run into that issue myself. So you can use the same method to migrate to a brand new computer. If you're on an older computer that's starting to kind of kick the bucket, then you can copy this folder to a hard drive like we just did and then copy it to the same location on the new computer or across your network to the same location and just replace the photos folder on the new computer with the existing content from the old computer, everything should migrate over. That would include your packages, your photos, your catalogs, with the exception of templates, and we'll go over templates next. But that is the right way to move to a new computer without having to start over from scratch. So. Templates. Uh, templates are the one thing that are a little bit different because you can create a, a template and save it anywhere. In this case, I have, I probably saved this to my desktop as a test. And now that I've cleaned my desktop up, it's no longer available. It's in the trash and now Darkroom can't find it. So that's uh, one thing we would recommend is always save your templates to your X drive so when you migrate or you move anything they're always relative to X and the new computer can see it. If you save it let's say to your desktop and move those files from one computer's desktop to another computer's desktop the desktop uh, is located inside the users folder so let's look at my desktop um, we'll open a folder. So you can see that this is based on my user folder in Eugene. So if you copy from one computer to the desktop of another one, this user's folder might be different. And once again, all those files are broken and you have to re-link everything back up. So it's real helpful to save all of your templates. And I will show you the location on uh, in your X drive under templates, then borders and save it just like we do. I have a sample borders. So one thing I like to do is in darkroom create a my templates folder and then inside of there uh, Create subsections and whenever we go back to our X drive whoops that's not the X drive I now have a folder called my templates and then if I were gonna add any graphics
I would then copy it to this location and then create my template and add my graphics from that X drive location so that they're always looking at X. So templates, borders, my templates, art templates. There's my graphic. And then we'll add my photo and save as a, uh, make it green screen. And then save it as a new border. And we want to save that template in that subfolder so that way whenever I move my X drive it's moving there's the template file there's a graphic file and because they're saved right next to each other there is no path it just knows that the files inside the same folder if I had saved it to my desktop it would say C users Eugene desktop and then the file name. So by saving it right next to it and inside the X drive, whenever I migrate, it's gonna make my life a lot easier. That is a recommended method for saving templates. Okay, and that is kind of the, the basics of using your X drive and how you can better prepare yourself for the future. Um, hard drive space, data management, just in general. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.